everyone and welcome to my tutorial about how to make a focaccia. But the difference with this one is, is that it's an art focaccia. So for today's tutorial, you require a few ingredients. Firstly, you need 680 grams of bread flour or plain flour. I'm using the gluten-free option. You require instant yeast, seven grams. So that's just one packet. Some sugar just a teaspoon, salt, olive oil, and then some fruit and vegetables. Fruit, if you like, mainly vegetables. I've got tomatoes, peppers, onions, chili, rosemary, and flat leaf parsley. Very simple, easy recipe to make, very delicious. The first step that we need to do is we need to create a mixture um, of yeast and water. So, I've got a pre-made seven gram packet of yeast. I'm going to pop it into a bowl. I'm going to place 250 milliliters of water, warm water, with that yeast. There we go, perfect. I'm going to stir it now and I want to create a foamy mixture. So give that a stir and with the warm water will activate the yeast and it will create a foamy like mixture. mixed in, just let it sit for five minutes. Blending it all in, breaking it up. It will get quite clumpy, make sure you're breaking those clumps up. And let that rest for five minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to prepare my mixer. So with your mixer, place on the bread setting pair of tongs and it's going to mix the yeast with the flour in a moment's time. Once that yeast has sat for about five minutes, put my timer on. Five minute timer. I've got gluten free flour that I'm using today. If you're not gluten free, normal plain flour is perfectly fine. So with our flour, we require 680 grams. 680 grams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and weigh that out now. It's about five cups of flour, um, but I'm just going to weigh it out. It's been five minutes now that we've had our yeast and our warm water sitting aside. It's ready to use. So I'm going to place that mixture into my mixing bowl. I've got my red hook attachment on my mixer. To the yeast and water, I'm going to add one cup of my flour. Start mixing away. Get a spatula, scrape those sides down, making sure that flour is all combined and there's no lumps. 
Once that first cup has been added and it's combined and there's no lumps, add the remainder of your warm water. So another 250 mils straight into the mixture. In with the mixture now, I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of olive oil. It's about 59 millilitres of olive oil. This is going to bind the mixture together Go straight into the bowl. I'm going to add some salt as well. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And half of my remaining mixture, just half. Going to mix that all together. Scrape those sides down. I'm going to add the rest of my flour in now. If you don't have a mixer, you can do this by hand. You're going to have to put a lot of elbow grease into it though. Lovely. With the final stages, you can mix it with your hands. If the texture is too wet, if it's too sticky, add a little bit more flour to it. But just gradually, you don't want to overdo it. As you can see, my mixture is far too wet and far too sticky, so I'm going to need to add some more flour. So I'm just going to add just some tablespoons at a time and get that mixed in. You don't want to do too much. There we go, that's perfect. So I just added an extra two tablespoons of flour into my mixture, just so it's not too sticky. I'm going to add that teaspoon of sugar into there now too. Give it all a big mix, make sure it's all combined. going to knead my dough on my worktop. So I'm just going to sprinkle some flour onto the worktop to prevent the dough from sticking. What the kneading does, it just binds all those ingredients together and prepares the focaccia. starts to stick, 
add a little bit more flour. So now what I'm going to do, what I'm using is a clear bowl so you can see the mixture rise. I'm going to put a tablespoon of olive oil in this bowl, all around the sides. This is to prevent the dough from sticking. So one tablespoon. I'm going to add my dough, which is looking very good, into there. Going to get some cling film, place it on top, and I'm going to set it aside for one to two hours. Now, what you'll notice is that the yeast will activate and the dough will rise. So it's probably going to be about double that size in about one to two hours time. Now, to help fasten that process, you want to keep this in a warm place. So I'm going to place it at my windowsill, just in the sunlight, and that will fasten the process of the yeast activating and the bread rising. Whilst we wait for our bread to rise, we're going to prepare the vegetables for the top of our focaccia. So with me, I've got some flat leaf parsley, some rosemary from my garden. I've got a chili, a onion, a pepper, and some tomatoes. Now, whatever which way you do it, it's completely up to you. I'm going to create a different design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my peppers. Everything has been washed and prepared to wash all the chemicals and the germs. I'm going to do a few different designs. I'm going to create flowers for on top of my focaccia with the peppers. So that's going to be my little flower. And I'm also going to do like a sunflower type as well. three flowers and then for the sunflower slice my peppers into small chunks you can use any color peppers that you like red orange green yellow I find every colour has a distinctly different flavour to it. Yellow and red are my two favourite flavoured peppers. Got my peppers ready and prepped. Next I'm going to do my onion. I'm going to cut my onion in half. Take off that skin. And again, it's completely up to you how you cut your onion. You could thinly slice it. You could cut it um, in quarters. Keep it attached if you want to fan it. However which way you'd like. So I'm going to do it in two different styles. Pop it to the side there. And with this one, I'm going to keep it attached to the root. And I'm going to cut the back of it so it's going to look like a tulip on my bread. Well, that's the plan anyway. Whether it looks like one is a different story. So there we go. So that's going to be the flower and I'll fan it out a bit once it's on top of my focaccia. Then I'm going to create a stem with my rosemary. So leave those aside there as well. Perfect. 
Now with your tomatoes, you can keep them on the vine if you've got vine tomatoes. If you don't have vine tomatoes, what you can do, I'm going to do a mixture of the two, you can cut them and slice them. You can do them straight in half. Like that. Or you can thinly, thinly slice them. I'm just going to cut them in half because they're quite small. Fun fact, tomatoes aren't vegetables, they are fruits. My focaccia dough is already starting to rise. It's only been about 10 minutes since we've had it over there in the corner. Perfect. And then lastly, I love chilli, so I'm going to add some chilli to it to add a little bit of spice. And these will also look like flowers on the bread. So the, the hottest part of the chilli is in fact the seeds. I'm going to keep my seeds in, spice it up a bit. And always remember when you're cutting chilies, never touch your eyes because that's when it will burn. Always wash your hands straight after you touch them. Plenty of soap. seeds there's not too many seeds in that one which is good so it shouldn't be too spicy now my flat leaf parsley you don't do it need to do anything to prepare it because on our focaccia later on we're just going to place it on top and the same with the rosemary doesn't need to be chopped you just be in its hole because that's how we'll place it onto the focaccia later on so we'll let the um, bread continue to develop over the next hour and a half to two hours and we'll go from there. Here it is, here's our focaccia dough. As you can see, it has doubled in size since we needed it on the worktop before. It's proved, it's developed, it's grown. So that's what you wanna see. What we're going to do now is we're going to just put some olive oil onto our hands just so the dough doesn't stick to our hands. And we're also going to place olive oil on the bottom of a baking tray. Keep it all covered, because that's where we're going to place our dough. So what we do, pop our hands in the dough. Oh, it's so light and fluffy, this is what we want to see. Obviously, once we place our hands into it, it is going to drop, okay? Because the air, we let out the air. Place your dough into your tray and you're going to spread it into all the corners. Now it will naturally bounce back, but just keep moving it, keep working it, keep spreading it. Right into the corners. The olive oil at the base of the tray will prevent it from sticking. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cover it in cling film we're going to place it into the fridge. Now, if you want to develop the flavour, you can keep it in the fridge overnight. If you want to prepare it the same day, it doesn't need to stay in the fridge overnight. Pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, so I've kept mine in the fridge for a few hours. I've now taken it out. We don't want the dough going into the oven really cold. So, another step is Keep it out for about 30 minutes to let it warm up again. Once it's warmed up and it's not freezing cold, spread some more olive oil on top of your dough and then you're going to press dimples into the dough. So dimples, I'm just poking holes all throughout the dough. Just with my fingers. As I said, drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top. I'm going to pop the olive oil that was still in that bowl from earlier so I'm not wasting anything. Perfect. What we're going to do with the dough now, we don't put the vegetables on just yet. We need the dough to cook 
for 30 minutes before we place our vegetables on top. Our oven is on, we're setting it at 230 degrees Celsius. Okay, that is quite hot. So you need to monitor your focaccia when it's in the oven to make sure that it doesn't burn or overcook. If it is too hot, turn the temperature down. Okay, so just keep an eye on it, monitor it. We're going to place it in the oven for 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes since I placed the focaccia in the oven. I'm now going to take it out and I'll show you what it looks like. It looks absolutely beautiful. You can see it's risen, it's got a nice golden texture to it. As I said, you've got to monitor the temperature. If it's too high, make sure you turn it down. You don't want it to burn. But a few little golden edges over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a design on top of our focaccia bread with the beautiful vegetables that we cut and prepared earlier. Okay, so now we're going to decorate our focaccia and make it into art. Now that I've made my art on the focaccia, I'm now going to brush it all with some olive oil. What we're going to do now is we're going to pop it back into the oven for another 20 minutes, but we're lowering the temperature to 180 degrees. And as I said, just keep an eye on it to make sure we're not burning our vegetables or herbs or the bread.